Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to the video for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. And in this one, I want to give you a quick chance to take a look at all of the new Silkbind and Switch skill moves. There are 42 in total. Each weapon gets three new moves and you'll unlock these organically throughout the game. Unlike Base Rise, where you had to do a few additional things, some quests, some other sort of finicky crafting, this is pretty simple. So if you guys do enjoy this video, like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what your favourite Silkbind or Switch skill is. And of course, do be sure to keep it locked for plenty more. First things first, before we go into the skills themselves, if you want to unlock these, the very first one you will encounter simply by getting to Elgado at the beginning of the game. You'll go through a little tutorial where Master Utsushi will talk to you about these switch skill scrolls, and you then have your first skill. Following on from there, you'll then want to progress through to Master Rank 4 to the point where you get the Urgent, or just before you get the Urgent to fight Astalos. And then following that, you will then have a few different people to speak to in various different locations, one of them being Master Utsushi, and he will give you the remaining two Switch skills. So, simply progress to Master Rank 4, and then you'll have them. Anyway, with that being said, let's start at the top. Great sword. The first one is the Surge Slash Combo. This is incredibly cool, described as an offensive style that combines speed with the weight of the weapon to unleash a stream of powerful slashes. Proper footwork is required, but allows for a large number of combos. This is basically your fast attacking combo. There are lots of different options you can have from this. You can string three X attacks together, three A attacks, three X plus A attacks, or you can weave these together in different permutations. One of my favorite ones goes from X plus A into A and then into X, where you will quite literally punch the sword into the ground. Following any of the three hit combos, you can then pull back and press X to perform a charge. Not as strong as the true charge slash combo, obviously, but this is a very nice fastest option that could also work with some elemental and status builds. Following on from this you then have the strong arm stance. This is a fantastic move, a technique that uses iron silk to reinforce both your arms and your weapons temporarily to fend off attacks. If used while charging you can quickly parry an attack and then unleash a fierce onslaught afterwards. So by default you hold down left trigger, press X and you'll then of course go into this stance. If you hit during this it will then quickly allow you to go and follow up with a charge. But the real use of this is of course using it during a charge. If you instead begin charging your weapon and you then hold down left trigger, you will again go into this stance, but because you've done this from a charge, you will then be able to go straight from there into the true charge slash combo, assuming of course you have that selected on your switch scroll, which means it's a fantastic counter way to get to TCS very quickly. Keep in mind you can also do this off the back of a bomb, place a small bomb, begin charging, hold down LT, the bomb will prop the counter and you then go straight into the charge. Very good for wake ups. And then finally you have the backslide. This is a quick evasive move as a wire bug. You watch for an opening while charging and upping your attack level and you can maintain charge during the surge slash combo or of course your other stance. So again in the same way that you may have in the past charged tackled charge tackled to basically quickly get to things like TCS you can use this for the very same purpose. You can backslide and then skip your charge levels. Next on the list we have the Longsword. The first one is the Sacred Sheath combo. This is an incredibly cool move described as a slow methodical movement that can be executed following attack. Upon sheathing your weapon you can harness the increased spirit to unleash a follow up slash. The power of the slash increases according to the level of the spirit gauge and if you are attacked before you are finished with the sheath it will consume one level of the spirit gauge and the move will be cancelled. However this is also a counter. So following any attack you hold down RT and you press B it will initiate this sheathing animation and then from there once it is done you hold down right trigger and then once the animation is completed you let it go for a powerful attack. Again if you have a fully maxed out bar if you are red then this will perform the full combo string and this is very powerful. It's a fantastic way to wake up monsters. Do of course keep in mind you can also whilst holding this stance use the B button to reposition so you can then dash around. Furthermore if you press right trigger during the initial part of this animation and you unsheath like this you can also counter during this moment. Doing so will fill up your bar. It won't go up to a color level but it will max out the bar and if you then press right trigger off the back of that you can instantly go into a roundhouse finisher to raise one level of gauge. So it is a fantastic move. You then have the Tempered Spirit Blade, a decisive silt by maneuver that parries any incoming monster attack with the Spirit Blade. Timing is key if you want to successfully parry an attack, but doing so will fill your Spirit Gauge and raise it one level. Holding down left trigger and pressing X, once you get the timing down for this one, it is an incredibly good way to just quickly raise your meter. And then finally you have Harvest Moon. This is the new move that casts out an Iron Silk Ring that narrows your range of attack but boosts spirit so that you can go on the offensive. Within the ring your spirit gauge won't deplete and if you perform any counter attacks it will add additional hits. Also worth noting if you try to walk out of this with your weapon drawn you'll get knocked back. <laughs> 
Then following from there we have the Sword and Shield. First up you have the Twin Blade combo, a two part attack that opens with a circular slash and follows up with a blade thrust. This is an easy attack to get multiple hits in with, so it's ideal for weapons with high elemental and status properties. This replaces your bog standard X combo which let's be honest a Sword and Shield users in the past has always been pretty weak. Historically we've used the first two hits, skipped the third one and then gone into the more powerful A combo but this is now a very hard hitting combo. It's fantastic, you can also input different directions to switch the way you're facing to basically create some infinite combos and this is now a very potent option also pairs very nicely with drill thrust so if you really want to lean into elemental and status definitely have this in fact even if you're leaning into raw damage it's just a straight up upgrade from the regular one so this is a must Moving on from there, you then have Destroyer Oil. This is the one where you use a wire bug to cover your blade with a special ointment, whose effects trigger if ignited by friction with your shield, and while active, monsters will flinch more easily, creating more openings for your attack. It's an oil, you can apply this one, keep in mind once it's applied, you can of course switch to the other scroll if you want to, so you can use this to buff up and then go to something like Metsu, so you can then get even more flinch. And then finally you have Shield Bash, the Captain America special, a combined offensive and defensive move using a wire bug to dash forward with your shield raised. If the attack connects with the monster, you can instantly follow up with a variety of attacks and if time right you can even parry incoming attacks and continue with your assault. So during this motion, not at the very beginning but during it you can of course block some incoming attacks and just simply going from this you can go into things like hard basher so this is a fantastic move and while we do have things like destroyer oil this alone is a flinch monster. Following off from there we then have the dual blades. First up you have the slide slash combo, this one is a technique that allows you to attack while evading and if you work it into your combos you can unleash a relentless attack that is difficult to defend against. Following in the attack you can input a direction plus X and you'll then perform these attacks whilst evading, they look incredibly cool, they are actually quite mobile so it's a nice way to maintain that offence alongside your combos. Keep in mind you of course do have the raging demon mode from before but for when you're outside of demon mode this is very useful. You then have Spiral Slash, a silkman attack that launches you spiraling forwards. Once your attack connects, your body acts as a drill and your blades bore into the target's flesh. You can also do this mid-air if you jump off a ledge, but it is worth noting this needs to be done into effectively a weak point on a monster. If you do it into a location that is not a weak point, you'll actually bypass straight past them. But generally speaking, do this into the monster, it launches in a diagonal motion, and you then drill into them and do multiple hits. And then finally you have Iron Shine Silk. This is described as an ingenious silkbind technique that uses turbulence from evading to sharpen your blades. And then with Shrouded of Vault and other evades, sharpness recovers if you time it right. So as you can see in this situation, if you perform any move that does an evade, you can then see this restores your sharpness. Very, very useful given that of course dual blades can rip through their sharpness. Following on from there we then have the Lance. The first one is the Shield Tackle, the move that quite frankly I was sleeping on because in the weapon previews it didn't look that great, but this is very useful. It's a technique where you charge forward with your shield raised, as your shield is raised you're able to then guard against incoming attacks, and you can also follow up with a variety of thrusting attacks. You can use this in your regular poke combo, but because you're advancing with your shield it also gives you fantastic KO capabilities, so this now allows you to knock out monsters and also continue the assault. You then have Skyward Thrust, a technique where the wire bug launches you high into the air, you thrust your lance towards the heavens and then pierce back down. It's worth noting that when you're coming down it inflicts multiple hits and this thing does actually hit pretty hard. Finally you have Sheathing Retreat which is described as a technique that automatically sheaths your weapon while using a wire bug to pull you away out of harm's way. No matter how effective your shield is, if you sense life threatening danger this is your wisest choice. And given that of course the lance is quite slow to put away and you normally have limited back hops, yes normally you'll hide behind your shield but in the event of danger this is handy. Next up, the Gun Lance. Firstly you have Erupting Cannon. This technique involves firing an exploding stake into your target and when using the Eruption Cannon, the tip of the Gun Lance heats up and slashing attacks are enhanced for a certain period of time. So as you can see here, this is the default slashing damage and then once you've done this, this of course gives you a nice boost. This will basically replace any of the regular Worm Stake Cannon, so any of the combos you would normally use to input a Worm Stake Cannon, you just simply swap with Erupting Cannon. Bullet Barrage is your massive damage option. This uses a wire bug to blast towards your target, unleashing everything with abandon. Shells, Worm State Cannon and Wyvern Fire will automatically be reloaded first before performing the attack since they are also consumed. It has a medium recharge rate, costs two wire bugs, but this is meaty damage. <laughs> And then finally you have Reverse Blast. Much like the Lance, this is also a way to get out. It's a rapid, backward evasive maneuver using a wire bug to stop. If no shells are loaded, you will do a quick reload, so you need to act with caution. So this will naturally consume your shells, but unlike the Lance one, this does still leave your weapon drawn, so it does allow you to continue your assault once you've got out. 
following on from there, we then have the hammer. First up, the spinning bludgeon charge. This is a really cool technique that stores release power and funnels it into the next charge switch attack. Power is built when performing a spinning bludgeon, which is a lot of the time a move that we used to sort of shy away from because it tends to leave you pretty open. But during this spinning charge, you hold down the right trigger and you'll continue to charge again. And then from there, you can either unleash it, you can press A to perform a charge switch, which then allows you to go into a strong attack from the other charge stance, or you can switch, then switch back again, go for another spin and keep it going. There's a lot of options from here. It makes you very mobile, but it's actually really nice to have some more utility worked into the spinning bludgeon. You then have Keeping Sway, a maneuver that uses a wire bug to quickly evade an attack at high speed. The nice thing about this one is that you're able to maintain your charge during the evade, and while the hammer has always been a weapon that you can move around with relatively quickly, this gives you even greater mobility. So you can maintain a charge, dash around, and then continue your assault. Finally, you have Impact Burst, a silk bind attack that wraps your weapon with iron silk, and for a short period of time, any charged attack performed causes the silk to vibrate, creating a shockwave that makes it easier to flinch monsters. Very similar to the Destroyer Oil, only for the hammer, so this is a nice passive buff. Next up we have the Hunting Horn. First up, the Swing Combo. This is a two-hit attack that can be delivered from either the left or the right. This allows you to quickly shift directions, making it useful for repositioning. Following either a left swing or a right swing, you can then press X or A to then perform one of these moves, and it will simply reposition you in the chosen direction. You then have Sonic Bloom, which is actually a really cool move. It places a wirebug cocoon on the ground that's tethered to you with iron silk, and when attacking, vibrations are sent to the silk and stored in the cocoon, which gradually swells over time. Effectively, any time you perform a recital, this will swell. After a certain number of performances, the energy store detonates, dealing stun and exhaust damage, so this is a great KO option in combat. And then finally you have the Silk Bind Shockwave. This is a Silk Bind attack that wraps your weapon in iron silk, and for a short period of time, any attack performed causes the silk to vibrate, creating a time-delayed shockwave that triggers additional hits. These additional hits do major stun, exhaust, and part damage. So again, this just allows you to wear on the monster and basically do more stun, exhaust, and part damage, which is fantastic, especially paired very nicely when you do your recital at the end. You get so many hits in this, and you just see numbers proccing left, right, and center. Next on the list we have the Switch Axe. The first one is the two-staged morph slash combo. This is a two-staged morph slash attack that follows an axe wild swing. The first stage morphs into sword mode, the second stage morphs back into axe mode, and during this combo, the power of the sword mode attacks increase and axe mode attacks fill the switch gauge faster. Following the wild swing, you would normally of course gone into your typical overhead slam, but now you can press the right trigger, go into the first stage, press it again, go back into the second stage, and it allows you to move incredibly quickly whilst looking hella stylish. You then have Wire Step, which is a wire bug based evasion technique that allows you to morph into axe mode while flanking the enemy. Highly effective for maneuvering while in axe mode, so of course you can then use this to either move left or right if you need to reposition and then basically wail on your target. Finally, you have the Elemental Burst Counter. This compresses switch gauge energy that can be released as an elemental burst. If the burst is released right as the monster attacks, you'll perform a power finisher and your switch axe will go into the amped state. Given, of course, how some weapons can take longer to get into the amped state, this is an absolute game changer. But keep in mind, this is not a regular counter. You need to make sure you unleash the attack as you're about to be hit. But once you get that down and the timing is very generous, then you can benefit from this. Next on the list we have the Charge Blade. First up, File Follow-Up Firing Pin. This is a mechanism that lowers the pressure of the elemental energy generated through shield thrust during elemental boost or by sword attacks while in the sword boost mode. The elemental energy generated builds up on your target instead but disappears over time. It can then be detonated by any attack in axe mode and extends the time limit of the elemental boost. So effectively, when you go into situations where you would normally dish out these elemental boosts, so for example, the sword slashes or the shield thrusts, you will see there is energy left on the target, switch over to the axe mode, attack it, and it will then detonate based on how many you have left on the target. Very cool and of course nice for uh, ensuring damage even if the target decides to move. You then have Ready Stance, which is a silk bind maneuver that binds the sword and axe together with iron silk. After guarding, a heavy knockback leaves you in sword mode and lowers your guard reaction so you're able to chain sword axe attacks. This is effectively, easiest way to describe this, like a guard point you can use at any moment. Guard points, of course, have always been a fantastic thing for charge blade, but they are limited to certain animations. This you can press at a moment's notice, and following this, you can of course go into a variety of different situations, but if you are hit during this, you can similarly still go into things like SAED, plus you can also use it as a means to cancel if you're going into, say, the pizza cutter, so you can then keep your attacks going. It's a very versatile move that basically has a ton of use cases. 
Finally, you have Air Dash, a wire bug based technique where you rise up while whirling an axe, then propel yourself away with a fire explosion. Damage often leaves the monsters mountable, so this is of course a nice mount move, and you can control your fall direction to some degree. If no fall explosion is detonated, you'll of course fall straight down, but being able to launch yourself up and then blast backwards is hella cool. Moving on from there, we have the Insect Glaive. First up, you have Kinsect Slash, a melee technique where you thrust forward with your Glaive and Kinsect. If the Slash connects, you then perform a Vaulting Dance, absorbing Extract, so of course this depends on the location that you attack. However, once you absorb Red Extract with the Kinsect Slash, you will no longer be able to absorb any other Extract, but it will allow you to perform an Enhanced Insect Spiker as a trade-off. <laughs> You then have the Awakened Kinsect. This is a technique where you hurl a Kinsect to inflict massive damage. It is hella cool. All extracts are consumed, and of course, the more extracts you have, the more potent this attack will be. After launching the Kinsect, you'll then close in using a wire bug, and you will simultaneously absorb the extract marking the target. It'll only absorb the location that you have hit, so if you throw this into the face, you'll dash forward and grab red, but if you throw it into other locations, you'll grab other parts. Either way, this is a great high damage move, just make sure you don't miss. Finally, you have Kinsect Glide, another great move for keeping you airborne. This is a technique that sends your Kinsect out and uses a wire bug to quickly jump to it. The Kinsect normally aims for a marker, but in the absence of a marker, it will fly forward or follow the reticle. When your Kinsect comes into contact with the monster, it'll absorb extract. So you can then use this as another means to gather extract, but you can also work it into your ever-growing aerial combo options. You can press X to perform jumping slash, a to perform the jumping advancing slash or the kinsect slash and B for mid-air evade and given that of course when you're using this move your stamina can recharge you can actually use this as a means to effectively stay airborne forever. Next on the list we have the Light Bowgun. First up is Critical Firepower. This is a special shooting style, it's a passive move effectively if you will, that further raises the damage output but narrows critical distance and increases recoil. Because the distance at which the power of the ammo is most effective has been reduced, you will need to be aware and adjust your firing position. So of course, as you can see here, the difference between having it active and not. You then have the Wyvern Counter. This is an urgent retreat that fires a shot with massive recoil using a wire bug to stop. And while it's not a powerful attack, its true value comes when it's used to evade incoming attacks. If timed right, you can even neutralize things like breath attacks. So use this more so for evasion and of course trying to counter as opposed to just straight up damage. Finally, you have the Mech Silkburn Shot, which is incredibly cool. This is where purified ammo is loaded with iron silk, allowing you to unleash an onslaught of shots, basically giving you a portable machine gun. Each shot is laced with iron silk and it lodges into the monster, and if any follow-up attacks hit the lodged ammo, the silk will react, increasing the chance of leaving the part broken or the monster mountable. Next up we have the Heavy Bowgun. First up you have the Crouching Shot, again another one of these passive styles. This is a shooting style that utilizes a special stance to reduce recoil. In exchange for not being able to move, you're able to fire in rapid succession. However, it's worth noting the longer you fire, the shorter the firing interval becomes, but at the risk of overheating your Bowgun, which you ideally want to avoid because it will leave you in a cooldown state, which is less than ideal. You then have Rising Moon, which is a silkbind technique in which a wire bug generates a ring of iron silk and special powder accumulates within the ring. And when ammo passes through it, the velocity of the ammo increases and in turn extends the ammo's range. So you can basically take this and take an ammo that say is not effective at a certain range, or you can walk back and you can then activate this and it allows you to shoot from further. Alternatively, you have Setting Sun, which behavior wise is very similar. It's another one of those rings that appears on screen. Only this time around instead, firing piercing ammo or multi-hit ammo through the ring will boost the total number of hits on impacts, which is incredibly useful. Then finally to round things out, we have the bow. You have stake thrust. This is an attack that thrusts an explosive stake into your target. It will quite simply replace your melee attack. So any situation where you would normally have melee with the bow, which let's be honest, you don't use that often, will instead apply a stake thrust and the stake reacts to follow up attacks, dealing extra damage to the target. The amount of extra damage dealt is determined by the type of arrow loosed. Keep in mind if you also use this with something like aerial aim and you then do the final melee attack, it will also swap it out with a stake thrust. You then have Butcher's Bind, which fires an arrow loaded with Iron Silk. If the follow-up attack lands in the same spot as the first, Iron Silk winds around both arrows, inflicting severing damage. Meanwhile, if the second arrow is off target, the lodged arrow disappears. So you can use this to cut tails. And finally, you have Bolt Boost, a maneuver that twines Iron Silk around your arrow. This move deals damage more effectively and thus requires range adjustment. So it activates super critical range, boosting damage within the range for a set time. You can see that based on the reticle that appears, this is your super critical range reticle. 
So there you have it, there's a little rundown on all 42 new moves for the weapons, three per weapon and lots of cool things to mess around with. Let me know in the comments down below which ones are your favourites, if you've missed some of our recent videos check out one of these ones and stay tuned for plenty more.